Sylvia Plath's novel, The Bell Jar, is a fictionalised account of her life. As Katerina over at Dejection Cat said in her video about confessional poetry, it is tempting to try and learn about Sylvia Plath and her life from the pages of The Bell Jar. But this is fiction, and sometimes the lines are blurred between what really happened and what is part of her imagination what is part of the character and what is part of her. The main theme in The Bell Jar is mental health. It follows the character and her struggle with depression and disassociation and her way of Managing that in her early adulthood. It shows her being institutionalised. And shows the public view of mental health, particularly in the time it is set, which is the mid-20th century. As she's written, in this book, the more helpless you were, the further away they hid you. And you get a sense that there was quite an out of sight, out of mind attitude to dealing with patients with mental health issues. Perhaps because this is a fictionalised account of her real life, Sylvia Plath has written some descriptions about the emotions and feelings and mental state of the protagonist that are perhaps the descriptions that seem most clear and true and honest of the, all the descriptions in the book. Quite early on in the novel, the protagonist describes herself in, as like the eye of a tornado. She says she felt very still and very empty, moving dully along in the middle of a surrounding hullabaloo. Also early in the book is the fig tree metaphor, which is referenced in the TV show Master of None. And the protagonist describes herself in this metaphor as sitting in the crotch of this fig tree, starving to death just because I couldn't make my mind which of the figs I would choose. I wanted each and every one of them, but choosing one meant losing all the rest, and as I sat there, unable to decide, the figs began to wrinkle and go black, and one by one they plopped to the ground at my feet. This reflects how many young people, especially creatives, can feel. This is the feeling of not wanting to risk losing possibilities just by choosing one. There is also a very strong theme of womanhood, motherhood and marriage. And the place of women in the society, particularly the society of the mid 20th century. But perhaps it is, I mean, it's definitely still at least a little relevant today. talks about the double standards for men and women, particularly in terms of sexuality. And there 
is the character's views on contraception and sexual equality and the way that the lack of sex of contra- of contraception that was available for women meant that women were constantly living with the fear of pregnancy if they chose to have sex while men could live double lives as she puts it one pure and one not she seems to have a very clear fear of being controlled of not being able to live her life and make her own choices Despite the difficult subject matter of this book, specifically depression, this is not an unhappy book. Or at least I didn't think it was. I really enjoyed this book. And I think it's still very relevant to the world today. Particularly for young people. Particularly for young women. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment about books that you enjoy, books that you want me to talk about. I would really love that. In the description box below, I'll have all of the products I used and also my links to my Etsy shop where you can get originals. My Instagram where you can see what I've been up to, what are the works I do. And my Patreon where you will have access to behind the scenes where I will be able to talk to you and where you will have an input on what videos I do and also fun rewards like originals and letters, snail mail, all sorts of exciting things. So please have a look at my other links. I look forward to seeing you again next Tuesday.